Welcome to Coding Friday, guys. Uh, so in this tutorial, we'll see how we can connect Cosmos DB with our .NET Core application. So now you can see I'm already on a very important file, which is appsetting.development.js. And this is a file where we're going to provide the connection string of uh, our Cosmos DB. So in my previous video, I already created the, uh, you know, the Cosmos DB. Uh, these are the you know series uh, we are into. So we have seen what is NoSQL database, what is Cosmos DB, and we also created one a dummy Cosmos account and then created the collection and the document. But all of uh, all of things we have done uh, using the portal itself. So uh, I would recommend you guys to see uh, or watch those videos first before continuing here. And this is the website of Coding Friday where you can uh, you know uh, see all those uh, our uh, GitHub links and all the mandatory things which you might require while doing the practical implementation can uh, fetch all those stuff from here also you can this is the github url you will also find the link in the in the description as well so the code which we are uh, you know gonna do in a bit is all already available in the in in this url okay so let's first start with the with the practical implementation this is the key section as we have discussed already so just copy this primary key here and put here in the uh, account url and this is the auth key and also there is a secondary key you can use this secondary key if your primary is not working but most of the cases we always use this our primary key and then there after the third thing is which is the cosmos tv demo your database id just paste it here okay fine so whenever you are making any changes in the dotnet core application you have to you know rebuild the application only build won't work because until you won't do the rebuild it will not fetch the latest uh, app setting and will, will not put into the uh, you know bin folder so we have done now the second thing is uh, we have to write a uh, adapter you can say which gonna uh, connect our, our dotnet core application with the cosmos db this is similar uh, like you used to uh, work in the in the in the sql server with the ad.net where we have the uh, couple of methods for connecting with the database and you know reading from the table the same we have so the first thing is uh, let me open this data access folder in the utility uh, we have the icosmos connection string in what we have one method which is just reading the uh, data database id and point url and auth key from the from the app setting where we have just you know uh, provided so let me just run this application and meanwhile i'll be discussing about the mandatory things you have to do so this was the sorry okay so this was the first thing you have to provide this uh, the connection string of course then the second thing is as a dependency which is a new get package you have to download microsoft.azure.cosmos db document db so this is the second thing which you have to do and after this you maybe you can use this these two classes automatically and they are uh, they are com common and uh, you can say more generally and this is our controller let's say cosmos controller in what i have added all the methods for creating the db creating the collection creating the document and i'll be calling executing all those with the postman so uh, application is running let's start with this create db click on this send button okay we are here so the first thing is we have the client available and in the client you can see the object of our cosmos db already created and the name what we are uh, suggesting is test db i'm hard coding the name you can uh, pass it from the postman as well or wherever it is required so it is returning to just f5 and see whether we have our uh, cosmos database with us or not I'll just refresh the page. Yeah, we have test db with us. This was the name we have given. Now another step is we want to create the collection. So let me just put the breakpoint to the collection one. Here we are. And just go over to the post and click on this create database. So uh, just come here. This is our database name. I think we have already created no props. It checks it actually create database if not access and if already exists it not gonna recreate so this is the create collection in what you are providing two things one is the db name and then the collection name so in our case db name is test db and the name of collection is test collection again you can make use of this create document collection if not exist which is async and now come back let's see do we have our collection Sure. yes we have now the third step is we have to you know add the uh, document inside this so just come here this is a create document and this is the post method if you notice let me just add the breakpoint 
the Cosmos controller and this is a great document which is expecting the user info. So I already added the you know ID, first name, last name and some of the product and the dummy dummy models. So we are just going to use or uh, make use of this user info. Just click on the uh, create document and here's the body I'm providing ID, first name, last name, anything, whatever the parameters which your object is expecting. Click on this and this is the ID. Okay, I am resetting the ID to the, to the Geo ID. Maybe uh, you can uh, have it one, two, three. Just click on this. Create it two. And now see, we should have our database with us. Having that document. Okay. So we have this. A uh, couple of things which needs the attention here. One is the ID column. We have provided our ID with here. This is the same as we have provided. The important thing is if you do not provide any ID, then the Cosmos DB will automatically create the ID that is in the form of the Geo ID. So you, either you provide the ID or the Cosmos DB would automatically create. And this is the first name and the last name, the two properties which we uh, already have in our docu uh, object, user object. Then RID, self, ETAC, attachment, TS. We will see all of them one by one. What is the use of them? Out of which one is very important, which is the ETAC property. And this is the property which comes into the picture when you are handling the concurrency the value of the etec each time you know updates whenever there is there is any update in the in the uh, collection or in the in the document so we'll see in in detail what is etec and how we can handle the concurrency so this was the uh, you know creation of the document and now we'll see how we can get this object and to get this object we again have our one method which is this one get database and just call it using this get you should have the collection, yeah. First name, the name by any, this was we were expecting. And then the last one we have to cover today, which is the delete one. And delete one, which is expecting any ID. So let me just provide the ID. So let's come here. So this is our ID. Just copy this and provide here. Okay, fine. Let's click on the send. We should have the ID here, have 11, created the collection, and we ask this to delete the document which we just created. Just go back, refresh this. Now we should have nothing actually because we have deleted the document. Like you can see, we do not have any. Uh, so this was the .NET Core application to connect with Cosmos DB. I have shared this code on the GitHub as well. You can make use of direct. Uh, you can directly make use of this code, or uh, you can you know copy from this uh, tutorial as well. So uh, thanks for watching this. In the next tutorial, we'll cover the ETAC property, which is another important one, and then uh, we'll cover the throughput. And also, we have to see all this happening with the with the local emulator as well. Thanks for watching this.